and we're back. So after having just a little time to think, I'm not getting anywhere. Uh, but we're gonna, I'm gonna check the neurons a little bit because I don't think there's there's any um, on other, <clears throat> like we can go back to actually, look at this, yeah, perform, perform analysis. It, it may still have the scent of the intruders, so I guess we're going to, I don't know why I feel like saying Tinsel Town, I guess we're going to Baker Street, uh, and just to check, um, check whether we can get the scent of them, like maybe, because it, it would make the case really easy if, <clears throat> if the scent was actually from one of the ladies, but then again, it wouldn't because, um, you know, the, the, I'm sure they, at least one of them pulls the rope. But if, if the maid's uh, scent is on the rope, then it doesn't really make much sense. Unless, I, I mean, I guess you gotta dust it, but I don't know. Let us see how the rope was cut. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. So... I would imagine it's just scissors. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. Yeah, because scissors, it's a really, th I, I need to sort of use my brain rather than, because I'm, I'm constantly in a sort of game state, <laughs> so that's not good. Um, usually when I've cut rope with uh, a knife, it is actually pretty smooth, because cutting a rope with this seems like a really arduous task. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. Yeah. I think a knife is actually the sort of smoothest way to do it. If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. Alright, so um also uh, whoever hid the silver knew their way around. Maybe that's not a fact because you know you go outside and you need something, you're gonna toss it into. You're gonna toss it into the uh, well. If if you're gonna toss it into the well, you're gonna go outside. You're gonna go into the shack. You're gonna find some bags or whatever, anything to put it in. One thing, hang on. One thing bothers me about that, which is <clears throat> that um, where were they being held before they were put into a guard into a bag? Because uh, Because, um, held when leaving, because if you already have like a bag, why do you need to go and get a bag to put, you know, stuff down into a well? Now, sure to, I mean, I think you can get a bag that no one can trace really. <laughs> and it just seems sort of uh, weird. Superfluous, what does that mark me? God damn it. But anyways, it, it feels sort of strange how, um, feels strange how, like why, because that makes me think that the, they were uh, carrying it in a box and they were like, where are we going to put it? Um, Seems strange, but I mean, people do strange shit all the time. But they take it in the box outside, 
and then empty it and then bring box back inside or one of them brings the box back inside and one of them flees. I don't know if this is a detail that's just sort of irrelevant or sort of a mistake, but I feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna grab some silverware from a box, you're gonna put it somewhere. Maybe they put it in a jacket and they needed a bag because they don't want to drop their jacket in there. That would make sense. <clears throat> so now we're gonna Figure out. Uh, oh, Toby's got a signed mattress. God damn, son. We're gonna see. Sharp knife. And knotted rope. Now, the rope is cut once with a sharp knife and tied quickly in sailor's knots. That could indicate that the intruder had a sailor's background. Is there anything? No, they're way around thingies um, so now I think we might have all the evidence because there's a, a an even amount of I think so I guess that sort of proves that he was violent there, I don't think there's any question about this because he it was it was evident And this, probably no friends. Lady Brackenstall married Sir Eustace shortly after arriving in, in England and remained at home during that time. There is little uh, possibility that she or her mate are acquainted with anyone in the country. Lady is acquainted with someone from the Rock of Gibraltar. <clears throat> Adelaide. Um... Because the thing about sailors is they can they can be anywhere really, and they are everywhere. So, um, not having any acquaintances in the city uh, is sort of irrelevant because the sailor doesn't really live in the city either. So, um, let's check the uh, last ones. Which one was it? So robbery is confirmed as the motive for the crime. The criminals may have plans to return for the silverware that they dumped. The robbery could have been, imi uh, been imitated to explain Sir Eustace's death. The silverware was not supposed to be found. And I think we have everything. And here we go again. Shit. I'm not, I mean, I'm looking forward to this, but I'm not looking forward to the uh, humiliation of being completely fucking wrong. But I'll, I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to actually spend more time on this rather than just, you know, giving myself a, a few brief moments to think and then just sort of ignore it. And then I realize that I need to get moving and do, th do stuff and then, uh, then I just, I didn't rush to the last one, but, oh, she's gone from the window, let me look at, oh, no, she's not, so I didn't rush the, I didn't rush at the last, oh, she was gone from the window, so let me try to get one fucking sentence out of my mouth, I didn't rush the last one, um, but I know that, that I, I made a mistake in sort of thinking that because I can't follow up that means that something is not true. And I didn't really try to fit anything else into the uh, picture. I still think that I did the right thing about not being emotional about it. Um, maybe I should have let my intuition play a little bit, a bigger part, but I, I also, I sort of didn't want to, um, I made a, a, a conscious decision not to care if I'm wrong, if, uh, if what I think makes sense to me. But I know that, you know, it's a game and it's a story, so things have to be a little bit more convoluted or, or you know, 
different or some things are impossible because it's a story in a sense i, I didn't want to i didn't want to take that path either so i follow i did follow the evidence in a sense but um i will try not to make assumptions that that sort of uh that that i can't really prove in a sense i'll try to stick to i'll try to think of the list of facts that I know for sure are true and then I'll dance around that and then I should probably put more weight on things and evidence that I know are um, that I, I at least have more security on and then I can sort of I shouldn't probably ignore completely some evidence pieces of evidence but then you know some some things aren't really evidence they they mean nothing they're just things that uh, are but there's nothing you can sort of gain from them really and i think sherlock holmes is like he's a he is a detective and he's also like the uh he's also the prosecution so he's like a lawyer as well in a sense because he always creates the case um rather than hands over evidence to to the uh to the prosecutor to create the case in a sense um i'm not sure how things work i think i just read about i actually did just read about how casework I, I don't remember why but how cases are um, brought to court over here and i think um well, of course, the the only th the only person who can uh, decide whether to prosecute is the prosecutor. But then, um, the police have to bring in all the evidence that they can before he makes that decision. And I think they're not, if I if I remember right, they're not really allowed to sort of, or or they're they're probably allowed to give their opinion or so on something. Um, possibly also on like missing evidence and things, but then they they don't really make the case. They can say that it was aliens, and then they bring the evidence, and then the prosecutor checks the evidence out and ignores the alien uh, part of it, sort of. Um, but I will. Uh, I guess now I'll try to. I'll I'll, I'll try to get all the. Um, I'll try to get all the uh, possible outcomes from this. So I'll, I'll try to be right first time. So this is like uh, one of the three probably prefers wine with bees wing. I, I, I'm not sure if it is actually like a preference thingy. Um, but for a fact, I think we can say that no one drank from the glass. So there were two people drinking out of these glasses. The rimming glass of the bees one because it's solely of the dregs from the other two glasses. Um, robbery is confirmed as the motive for the crime. So that's not confirmed at all. The robbery could have imitated it could have been imitated to explain Sir Eustace's death. The Civil War was not supposed to be found. I don't know about, you know, I, I guess not supposed to be found is an accurate way to describe it. The robbery was faked and the whole story invented in order to blame Sir Eustace's death on the Randalls. The testimonies and evidence match and point to the Randall gang. Now, match and point to. The evidence points towards the Randall gang, but I, I won't select that just yet. Uh, the death of Sir Eustace could have been due to his accidentally striking his head on a fireplace grate. The death of Sir Eustace could have been due to a poor poker blow, poker blow, so it, it could have been either. Um, and I think it's this one, and I think if the death was instant, I think he was sitting up at least at some point, because the blood trickled down on his shirt, and I, I mean, if that's a mistake by the game, it's a pretty shitty mistake to make, because it's like a murder uh, detective thingy, so... Um, I think this is not possible because of um, the blood trickling down uh, unless he, he fell down, hit his head, 
fell down on the floor, then someone picked him up, held him up, the blood was trickling down, and then they set him down again. That's possible, but that sort of, you know, destroys everything that happened before. Uh, Lady Bregenstall married Sir Eustace shortly after arriving in England. And they are... I mean, are they? There's little possibility that she or her maid are acquainted with anyone in the country. Now, someone had to take the picture, uh, for sure. Um, but it's one of those things where, you know, I don't really... Like, the only picture of myself that I can think of was taken at a place where I haven't been to in decades. So, it's sort of... It doesn't really tie me to the place. It just proves that I was there once. Um, so I'll, I'll choose this for now, but I think it's the I think it's the opposite. Uh, the robbery was faked with the whole story invented in order to blame Sir uh, Eustace's death on the Randalls. So I'll say I'll say this, and then see what what comes up. So Eustace was murdered by the by the one person who was visiting that night. It was he who tied up Lady Brackenstall. He is tall and strong. Uh, okay, look for sailor. The person who was visiting that night was probably a sailor. So we're, I mean. We're actually getting somewhere, but I feel like this is going to be a long ass line of shit. <laughs> I thought we were actually done. Uh, yeah, it says no more clues available at the moment, which is good. Because it, uh, I was unsure whether it just said that there are no clues available anymore, even though if there were, and we just hadn't found them. So... Uh, Search the archives. Rock of Gibraltar. So I thought this was uh, the name of the ship and the date of Lady Brackenstall and her maid's voyage from Australia. So, right, Adelaide. Alright, let's, let's have a look. Sort of confused. Newspapers 1893, East Africa Company, there we go. The Rock of Gibraltar, a bulk carrier from the Adelaide, Southampton, London line, Cunard Building, James Street, London, has returned from a six-month voyage through India, New Zealand, and Australia. The ship brought to England Miss Mary Fraser, the heiress of the Fraser family, owning land and tin mines in Australia. This reportedly beautiful young lady is presently engaged to Sir Eustace uh, Brackenstall, one of the wealthiest gentlemen in Kent. What was her name again? Mary Fraser, heiress to the Fraser family, owning land and tin mines. Again with the mines. Oh, shit. Uh, so, the powder they stole. The gang, I mean. Um, I'm not sure what my piece of paper is from before, but I still remember, I think, mo uh, most of them, if not all of them. The steamer and mines being referenced, and then the powder and mines and steamer uh, the powder and mines especially have something to do with each other i would imagine and then the steamer being used for something um i can't remember whether the steamer was actually stolen or whether it was just uh, borrowed or something uh, it's the word for it not not uh stolen not like grand theft auto grand theft boat but there, there's a there's an in-between thing or I think it's actually a law around here, which is like, if you take a car and you go for a joyride, it's different than stealing the car. 
or something. I mean, it you know it makes sense, but I think the law was stretched pretty far. So you can go on a on a week long joyride and then return the car, or leave it or abandon it, and then it's not stolen. It's uh, you just borrowed it. Here it is. Okay. The shipping company, the Adelaide Southampton London line, and its address. Interesting. It must be the place where they keep the records, including the one for the crew of the Rock of Gibraltar. I think that if you pretend you're from Scotland Yard, they'll give it to you without any problems. But I have another solution. I'll call in the specialist. Where's that little fucker? Wiggins? Wiggins, could you come upstairs, please? At your service, Mr. Holmes. I need a register, my young friend. If you could borrow it, there will be half a guinea for every one of you. I need the crew list of the Rock of Gibraltar in 1893, and their current employment. I'm straight on it, Mr. Holmes. Do you really think they'll find it, Holmes? My secret police is better than the Yard in many ways. Here it is, Mr. Holmes. But we can't take it back. It's too risky. Put it on the table. I'll take care of it. Good work, young Wiggins. Wiggins. This list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar, on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. This must mean that someone on this list is our mysterious visitor. And these are the lists of the senior officers of the Adelaide Southampton London Line ships. Let us find out who was in London upon November the 7th. November the 7th. So I still don't really know why they left the silver. Um, well, these guys were. I do not think oh. that this sailor has any connection to I the case. I don't know what the cl so departure from Adelaide, Australia. Oh, right, departure from Australia to England. So it's probably going to be the last one, but <laughs> um, so that one actually makes sense. So the Bass Rock. St. Thomas. So that was the only one that made sense. Because they left three days later. Um, I'm, I'm trying to sort of think about... Uh, like, they could have just taken the um, the silver, you know. If someone is an officer, he doesn't really need the silver. Nobody needs it. Uh, nobody needs to steal it. And it's one of those things where, you know, in, in two weeks after the whole murder is done with and so on, she can just put the silver back in the box and nobody's going to come looking for it. So, Mr. Jack Croker, Captain... Captain... <laughs> Captain... Mr. Duncan uh, Chalmers, first officer, senior officer, what, Nail? Is your name Nail Harkus? Nail Marcus, Nail Harkus Jr. George Stewart, extra second officer, Frank Willock, third officer, Mr. Murdoch Hooper. So do I just... Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the date of the crime and he is due to depart in two days. Right. 
So then because uh, she's rich or you know attractive in many ways. There's a reason for all of this, but I'm, I'm still sort of, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, the actually, actually the only problem I'm having is how smoothly this is going, right? <laughs> but um, let me just make sure the other names, Charles, um, Henry, Ernest, Thomas, Herbert, William. So this list shows the senior officers of the Rock of Gibraltar on which Lady Brackenstall and her maid made their voyage. Lady Brackenstall does not know anyone in England. Um so, but are, are we done now? Cuz if I click all the do I have to click all the I other do not names? Think that this sailor Mr. Jack Crocker was in London upon the day. Am I? I th no. Is there another? Op Did I just miss something? Uh, departure from Adelaide, Australia, March 2nd, 19, uh, 1895. So they were traveling this whole time. May 6th, 19, uh, 1894, from Adelaide, and they were here. November 12th, or they will be here November 12th, which is, uh, um, not, has not happened yet. Uh, I guess I need to click on all the names that are on the list. So, departure from London, England, let, let me try that. This officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. Right, okay, so I need to, yeah, deduct the right one. Uh, Henry Southward. Let me just try to find Henry now. Ernest was one of them. No, it was Herbert. James Talcott. Herbert Whittington. I do not think that this yeah. this officer was on a ship that sailed half a month ago. He wasn't in London at the time of the crime. Uh, Henry Southward. I'll try to look for one name at a time. Because otherwise I might miss uh, some of the... This officer is still at sea, therefore he cannot be involved. Ernest Woods. This officer is still at sea, therefore he... Thomas Walker. This officer is still at sea, therefore he... This officer is still at sea. Captain Jack Crocker is our mysterious visitor. He was the only one around at the time of the murder. Okay, things are getting interesting now because <clears throat> I'm still not sure about... Well, actually I am, at least when it comes to the clues and stuff, I, I feel sort of secure about it. And especially now that we got this sort of unlocked as well. I'm not sure if there's a way to be wrong. This Crocker, do you think it would be interesting to meet him? Our young friend should be able to find him. Wiggins, could you find a way to bring this Captain Crocker here to us? Here? Holmes, that could be dangerous. No problem, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, I was informed that you were looking for me, and I'd like to know why. 
Yes, it is important that we talk. You will soon understand why. It looks fairly old. Honest. Can you really say that? I guess Holmes knows more than I do. Strong. Nothing on the hand. Some dirt on the pants. Pantsaloonies. Clean boots, but dirty pants. What's the, what was the last one? Clean boots, newspaper ink, sea knife, strong build, honest. What was the last one we got? Oh, sea knife. There it is. Shit. Okay. So, a sea knife actually has to be... Like on a boat, you, you actually do need a pretty sharp knife. Many times. You are acquainted with Lady Mary Brackenstall, are you not? Yes, I think I do remember her from when I was first officer, but I still don't see... It seems your relationship went beyond that of mere passenger and first officer. How dare you? Indeed, how reckless a feeling is love, particularly if one is prepared to commit a murder in its name. Explain yourself this instant! You are aware that the murder made the headlines of the morning press. You read the newspaper report, but to your dismay, found it much fabricated. Once you learned that I wanted to see you, you came straight away. You needed to know what I had found. You? And what do you know? That evening, you were with Lady Brackenstall, despite the danger. I'm not afraid, Mr. Holmes. Besides, all of this is just guesswork. You would be right if there was no evidence. What then? <clears throat> so, before I start clicking and allowing Sherlock to tell us things, uh, let's see what was, was sort of necessary. So, <clears throat> It was necessary for him to tie her up and let's uh when i'm saying this i'm assuming that the maid had nothing to do with this whole thing although you know she she would she would lie probably if she knew anything she would lie um but i i would think that you know i, I wouldn't want to involve my friends in any sort of murder that i i would be bound to be doing and things like that so um I, I don't think I think I would rather make her testify that she she that her her testifying would assure that she's innocent in a way so I, I don't know if it's required or necessary or even known but I would imagine that if we follow this line he would have tied her up after everything happened and then she would have uh, called for help um, the injury that she sustained might have been from, you know, anything. It might have been uh, fabricated, but I don't. I'm not sure he. This guy would punch a lady, although maybe he would to save, you know, murder charge. But uh, assumptions. So many assumptions. But anyways, she uh, she's tied up by him. He cuts the rope from the bell, ties her up, uh, takes the silver puts the uh grab the silver into what in his hat goes outside finds a bag puts the silver in there throws it down the well then f climbs the fence and leaves and then after you know like a minute when he's gone uh wait a minute there's one problem here there's one problem here though 
Can I access my... No, I can't. Shit. Uh, the... The three men. Um, testified by... The maid. She said she saw three men lingering about. Now, they could have been with the captain, but I don't know. Like, that's, again, just assuming too much. But that would mean that she's on this thing, too. She knows what happened. Um thus tying her up and everything starts to make less and less sense in a way but then again you know we have hindsight rationality we're not under pressure let's see what he says but I'm, I'm starting to again have my doubts about things lady brackenstall was tied to a chair on the night of the murder and it was you who tied her up you call that evidence mm -hmm. Yes, as she was tied with a sailor's knot. Your handiwork. So, it's a sailor who's done it. That proves nothing, Mr. Holmes. I'm not the only <coughs> sailor in London right now. Your theory is flawed, anyway. On the night of the murder, I was aboard the Sharp. I was supervising the repair of a porthole. At night? It was an emergency. There was a leak. You can ask the ship's carpenter. He can confirm. I'm sure that he can. Perfect. In that case, we have nothing more to talk about. Good evening, gentlemen. Holmes, what should we do now? Would you like to check his alibi? No. There is no doubt that these men will testify in his favor, and there will be no way to check. So, what then? So, we must work with what we have. We have all the puzzle pieces. Now I understand why you dissected the bell rope. God damn it, we don't... I mean, we could have more pieces, man. <laughs> but, uh... He was there during the night, during an emergency. Fine. Um, the reason Sherlock said that this had to happen before midnight was because of all the uh, the time that it would have taken for the message to reach Sherlock. And then it was early morning when they left um, to the area. So Crocker is lying, his moment is clear, he appeared as soon as he heard that I was looking for him, thus signaling his guilt. That doesn't... Captain Crocker was aboard the Sharp on the night of the murder. He was not afraid to confront me. He had a confident demeanor. He did, but... That's, I mean... captain is the killer because that doesn't really prove that he killed anyone he might have been there to um, mess around or you know try to uh, or try to sort of hide what had happened if they had an affair um, it, it's uh, it, it's very clear that his men would lie for him um, it's also a coincidence that he was there at night, or quite the coincidence, and also, you know, a night is long, so if he went there, let me check what he just said, if he said anything about times, I think timelines are going to be pretty relevant here. Um... Because I think some of this was a little bit too obvious, but maybe I need to play around with that idea, just going with the obvious, because I don't know. I, th I feel like that's been a problem before. Like here he says, uh, and what do you know? Like, like what do you know? Like he, he admits it, so 
he um he's sort of giving it to us but then i feel like you know if if you like is is that just a flaw a sort of a flaw in my brain or, or in the acting in a sense where he sort of he just admits things but then i feel like you you create the sort of not an ingenious murder but in a sense you know you you plan things out and then then you start breaking down as soon as anything sort of happens or like said like sherlock made some really pretty wild accusations here but um things that are pointing towards uh him being guilty are the the height of the the cut rope um the knife that he carries with him and he wouldn't you know try to hide his knife because he, he doesn't know that we're looking for the knife um, he doesn't really uh, there, there, there really was no way for us to know about um, there really was no no way for us to really f or anyone to really figure things out to this level that he would assume that people would figure it out um, like how do you sort of come up to this come to this conclusion uh, through any well legal means when you know Sherlock needed some help to get some documents uh, stolen documents and things like that so he in a way feels pretty safe and a lot of people have met you know the woman before but I, I, I feel like I really would like to spend more time on this um, but I feel also feel like if the more time I spend on this, the more I'm going to confuse myself. But I, I do want to go through the evidence once um, before I sort of make my conclusion. But I, I just feel like this is, you know, super obvious. <laughs> but then I feel like when I click this, it's like, you know, 2% have chosen what you did. And I, I I'll feel like a dumbass. So um, what I'll do is I'll leave this here. And I will go through the evidence and then I'll come back with uh, the most likely culprit in my mind. I will also try to unlock the other uh, options here. I'm not sure, but I'm, I think there are maybe uh, two, maybe two uh, more. Well, there, there's the gang and then there's the wife, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out or I will try to figure it out next time. We'll see uh, see how badly I do. No, confidence. We'll see how great I, uh, I am at solving murders the next time.